just enjoy your life and no worries no stress trust the process yeah and <clears throat> we are here in this world to learn to explore to develop uh, ourselves not to live in a comfort zone and you Saba your life I guess I guess I see and you provided a lot of uh, uh, proofs that your life is um, um, a, an example an example of uh, living a, a comfort zone yes, yes. Uh, start, starting with your uh, uh, school years yes and etc etc so you are an uh, open-minded person yeah really you accept all cultures all people and feel confident confident yeah among different cultures and very integrated and uh, uh, very very uh, comfortable yeah feel because people is uh, uh, the same yeah um, so what is the meaning of your life Zaba? meaning of my life yes hmm. I just for me I think it's just that I want to do something either to improve myself or to improve like that's like the minimum that I feel like I should do or to improve the lives of people around me and I, I think I get this from my dad because as I was telling you like he didn't have the opportunities for himself but he made sure that his children had all those opportunities that he didn't so for me that is life like either you improve yourself or if you can't like improve others or like the other way around like one of them makes life more meaningful for me yeah you you are talking like uh, Dalai Lama <laughs> <laughs> so wise so uh, wise girl maybe <laughs> No, he, he must be wiser than me. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? And uh, so y I guess you feel happy, yeah? You you are a happy person. Yes, most of the times. Yeah. I'm very grateful. And uh, also I think traveling has a contribution in it because when you travel more, you realize the privileges that you have especially if you travel to underdeveloped or developing countries or you see life in different part of parts of the world you realize that your problems are sometimes nothing in compared to what some other people are facing so it just eventually makes you happy and as you were saying like you know just live the moment no stress once you learn that everything is you know a, a part of our perfect or a divine plan and everything will eventually come to its place you automatically become more happy and then again because of my family um, I think I'm like it's the biggest blessing for me so I'm, I'm happy like I have no serious concerns sometimes I do get disappointed uh, when I see how things are around me um, you know people are running after money or they they are not thoughtful enough they're hurting others that does disappoint me a lot and I would maybe feel sad, but usually I'm a happy person. Mm. Um, when you faced uh, in uh, Sweden and in Denmark with um, uh, religious uh, fanaticism, yeah, a, a, even five years old girl mm -hmm. asked you about uh, your. The religious beliefs about Allah. Yeah. Uh, were you shocked? And um, uh, how, how do you think why uh, people who live in um, uh, free society 
so close-minded, so focused on religious beliefs, on Quran, uh, their culture, maybe it's a way to uh, self-identity, maybe it's a way to uh, feel their value value yeah because they are migrants and it's uh, a, 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 a problem between uh, local locals and uh, uh, in Camus yeah migrants mm -hmm. do you think so um, I think there are, there could be different reasons number one a lot of people they do travel to a new country but they don't change their community you know, for example, when I travel, I try to interact with the locals, but there are a lot of people who would travel and try to find people from their country there because they don't want to leave, leave their comfort zone. For example, I know like if Pakistanis come here, they would try to find other Pakistanis and interact with them. So in this case, you have changed the country, but your community is the same. So it doesn't, you just have changed maybe the, the environment or the climatic conditions, but the people your surrounding are still the same so it doesn't give you the chance to grow and see things more clearly uh, second thing could be again the media you know because we hear so many bad things about West and they hear so many bad things about us so there is this negativity from both sides and unless people talk about it it will it will you know you can never get rid of it so I think that's one of the reasons because you think that they are bad and they think you are bad so you just don't come together at one point. And what else? And I think the third reason could be I've noticed that when people are a minority somewhere they put more focus on preserving their identity or their beliefs. I, I don't know why exactly it is so but I can give you an example. For example, when I was in Sri Lanka I felt that the Muslims there were more committed to the religion than Muslims in Pakistan because Pakistan is like it's like a Muslim majority country so everything is I think they take things for granted but also I, I have met uh, like Muslims from for example from Thailand and I always find them more committed as well because they are a minority group there so I think when they're in minority they, they have this pressure that they have to protect their identity and not get you know uh, influenced by the other group so that could also be one of the reasons mm. um, how do you feel you are all you are always a newcomer yeah you are always in uh, because you live just uh, several weeks or a bit longer mm -hmm. so you never fully integrated in, in the in any country yeah you are always a, a foreigner uh, uh, like I would say alien <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it is true uh, newcomer how do you feel what do you have your special philosophy, maybe? Special philosophy? Your own? That's why I, why I said in the uh, beginning, I feel like I belong everywhere and yet nowhere. Mm. For me, um, I think I have lost that sense of home now, which is a, maybe one of the downsides of, of traveling so frequently that now every place is same for me. I don't feel homesick anymore. Uh, I do miss my family but I don't feel homesick like in, in extreme ways and I keep traveling and you are right that I have been like a foreigner for the last six years of my life uh, but yeah as I said like I, I really love Rumi maybe you know this yeah. is a poet and yeah. he has a lot of this stuff where he says that we are just like a traveler in this world and where he says that I am a trace of the traceless. Um, I think once you get used to it, there is no way back, perhaps. And you just got used to leaving your comfort zone again so often that it's now the same for you. And for me, like, you know, for some people, maybe they try to go to countries they already have been to, so it's easier for them. But when I am traveling, even when I was coming to Estonia for this internship, 
one of the motivations behind choosing Estonia was that okay I have not never been to this uh, Baltic countries and that's why I chose it because I like to leave my comfort zone and again it's also linked to my idea of growth as I mentioned before so that that's my philosophy around it great great and you always find uh, a friends yeah always yeah. Uh, everywhere everywhere um, there's a lot of good people yeah everywhere in any country in any, in any culture yeah? true you, you can find somebody to to talk to share your thoughts you don't feel um, alone yeah or not no uh, it is right Hold on. Uh, especially when I'm traveling and uh, if I stay for example in hostels or I have used couch surfing a lot I always find people who kind of open their doors to me and uh, like even in a country like Poland which is notorious in media usually as I told you like I was able to find friends and like a family who hosted me for Christmas or when I was in Sri Lanka a guy like he opened his house doors for me so I always find good people and I don't know if it's just the energy in general, but usually um, of all these countries, I think I just had some bad experiences in Egypt. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I had wonderful experiences everywhere and I was always able to find people with whom I could talk and just, you know, they were complete strangers to me, but I was very comfortable in sharing my opinions and thoughts on any subject with them. What about your bad experience? Tell, tell me. Um, I don't want to go into a lot of details because it's somehow still disturbing and, and my family doesn't know about it, so just in case they watch this, I, I don't want to go into a lot of details, but I had uh, related to safety, I would say, some bad experiences there. I was there for two months with for an educational project. I was in a very fancy school and uh, I mean, like right from the beginning, there were a lot of things which bothered me and I went there with an idea to, you know, kind of educate children and, but it turned out that it was a very fancy private school where everything was more about show off. You know, they were like taking pictures all the time of kids and they were more focused on the social media of the school. So it kind of contradicted my view or the reason why I went there in the first place. So yes. they want to impress people. Um, yes, because they're to like. Please <laughs> them to to yeah. be in the sun and uh, to show themselves how how their life uh, is good and mm -hmm. yeah to impress people. It's a, it's it's a cultural norm. Yeah, it was more focused on you know impressing people than actually educating the kids. Yeah. So that was like somehow very d disturbing for me because I went there with Isaac where. Uh, and I went there with the idea that I would do something good, bring a positive change, but I realized that that's not the place where I can do it. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was oh, a very fancy place. Sorry, they... Egypt, Egypt, sorry, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not saying maybe it was just my experience. I always kind of added my experience was not good there. I saw the pyramids, so yeah. I don't regret my decision of going there because whether good or bad experience you learn something from it absolutely, absolutely. and uh, yeah i think i just, uh, it's it's hard <laughs> to reform egypt yeah. <laughs> yes yes, yes. Uh, uh, saba wanted to help you <laughs> saba wanted to help you guys but you are so close-minded <laughs> and um, can't be educated by the so bright person uh, I hope there are some other people who could bring out good changes there. But um, there were some good, there were some good people too that I met there. But um, overall, my experience was not very positive, as I said. Uh, but I had this flatmate there who was lovely. She's actually from Montenegro, but she's like one of the best, you know, gifts from that experience. We are still in touch, and we were there for each other in all the hard situations that we went there some of them were together and I feel like we are now connected for life so um, as I said like each experience has something good to offer you it's your choice what you want to focus on 
even from the bad experiences you can learn something and make sure uh, maybe not to do the same mistakes again or to be more alert I would say that's great mm -hmm. 25 countries what is your favorite um, that's that's hard I think I'm like unable to answer that but um, Turkey has a special place for me because since it was my first foreign destination and as I said it was the country which gave me the confidence that I can travel the world alone and be on my own and as I said like I was always very loved and welcomed there and then I also really love Poland um, Ukraine I think Ukraine is a very underrated country it's very beautiful I have been to Switzerland and I can compare the beauty I think Ukraine has similar beauty and a lot cheaper <laughs> because Ukraine is really cheap like in Switzerland you go and you are broke the very first day but in Ukraine you can enjoy the country the people were really lovely also in Ukraine they have very good food and then Sri Lanka was great for me I spent like two and a half months there I did my internship and I also volunteered there in in a, in a language school I was living with the host family and also because they have this diverse culture and nature and elephants uh, <laughs> yeah elephants. It, yeah Sri Lanka is also like very exotic yeah exotic and it has like a special place for me special what what is special uh, as I said as spirit yeah the, the whole spirit of this country yeah I think spirit is the is the right word like I was explaining how different religions are there together even though as a foreigner it's like one of the countries where they will rip you off <laughs> you know they will always try to charge you more and you always have to you know have these long discussions and bargains so it's not very easy to, to travel there and also their transport system is like crazy uh, their buses are like very full as as everywhere in uh, the east yeah yeah also their trains like I remember I uh, traveled with the train there and you they will give you a ticket even if they don't have a, a, a seat you know so yeah. I traveled in a tr train and I was sitting on the floor of the train so it was an adventure but it was overall very very positive experience for me and as a child I but you could use um, e um, elephants <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, when I was small I always uh, because I was the youngest one I wanted to have a s younger sibling but I didn't want a human sibling I always asked my mom that I want an elephant sister I don't know like from a young age I was very fascinated by elephants and to be honest it's one of the the reasons that I went to, to Sri Lanka because they have these a lot of elephants and uh, natural parks did and you it, talk? I, I based an elephant mm -hmm. um, uh, I didn't ride it because I don't find it very fine and also uh, did you ride or feed? no? no I just ba bathed it like uh, in a pool and mm -hmm. I, I helped to clean the elephant oh. yeah uh, but there is also a downside to it because there are so many tourists Sri Lanka is very touristy and they exploit the animals sometimes because uh, you know they are earning money through the, those yeah. elephants so I was like very worried about that too and that's why I also didn't like ride on an elephant because I was reading actually they are not supposed to be for riding they are not like horse they have a different uh, bone structure so actually you are not supposed to ride them but people pay and then they overuse them so yeah. I, I uh, had those uh, kind of unfortunately, concerns unfortunately unfortunately but I guess what kind of um, home animal, uh, domestic animal uh, you would prefer to uh, have? <laughs> uh, uh, an elephant, I don't know. Yeah. Elephant, yes, <laughs> I always joke about it, like I want a baby elephant and my mom says like, okay, it will be a baby in the beginning, but it will grow, <laughs> so where are you going to keep it? Um, I mean, I joke, I, of course I know that the best place for elephants is in the wild, uh, that's where they belong so they are not meant to be kept in home I was just small so I wanted to have an elephant sister <laughs> that's great yeah. um, what um, 
So it's good to focus on the positive sides, yeah, of the travelings and and the world and okay. people. And uh, can you can you control your thoughts? Sometimes it's hard, and while you were saying it, it just reminded me of an incident which I had when I was in Denmark. Um, I was at this metro station, and I just wanted to confirm the direction because when I'm traveling, that's one of the things that confuses me. I know which stop I have to be, but I don't know if I should go this way or or that way, especially if I'm new in the in the place. And there were two like police officers there, and to one I asked him, but he looked at me, and I could feel racism for example you know negativity mm -hmm. and he didn't answer me and I just waited and then the other one he himself asked me like what do you want so now there were two people at the same time and now it's in my hands which one I want to choose like one of them was very like negative towards me but the other one was very positive so I think at the end of the day it's in my hands to focus like which I want to spread and tell others and which one to just keep it to myself because I think there is already so much negativity in the world that I don't need to spread the, the bad things and again I understand that maybe he has some bad experiences before like there is a reason for I can't say everything but for most of the things so even if he was negative to me maybe there was a background story to it and maybe it was justified so, but it's it's very weird. It's very strange to hear these things about racism from you, especially because you are young, a beautiful, educated girl. How do you face with uh, um, a racism? I don't understand it. I really, don't understand. As why, 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 uh, why do you think that people, uh, it's, it's a racism when they don't want to talk to you, yeah? Uh, or uh, did somebody uh, tell you something about your um, uh, appearance or uh, uh, ethnicity. Have you ever heard a, 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 a something which uh, could um, 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 how would say um, uh, make you sad? Um. Uh, again, okay, this incident is from Poland, but I usually don't mention it to people because as I said there is already so much negativity and because I had like hundred positive experiences there, so I tried to just ignore it, this, but now since you have asked... And, sorry, I, I want to add, and you are so positive person as well. Uh, um, uh, so I wanted, I was looking for like a place to rent and I found a, an advertisement and I had a mentor in, in Poland and I asked her like can you please call this person because she was in Poland and she know the language so I thought it would be easier if she inquires about everything and she contacted this, this uh, person who was living in that apartment and I was going to share the apartment with her and she, when my mentor like told her that you know she's a uh, from Pakistan and a Muslim the other girl said that she's afraid of me even though she never met me she had never seen me but she didn't want me to stay with her and then uh, I found another place but uh, so yeah that was I think one of probably the top of my head the incident where I felt that okay there was racism but the words she used was that she was afraid and I don't entirely blame her, I blame the media and the movies. Like if you see the movies, the bad guys are either the Russians or either they, those are like the Muslims with beards and they're always shown as terrorists. So now when you complain about this thing, actually the media is the responsible. They rarely show people from Pakistan or India as the good guys. They would always stereotype them. The mafia and the movies are, for example, always Russians, even though I know that it's, it's not true, but 
if you are continuously showing this through movies or those media then i think it's normal that people will develop that that kind of thought and not all people have traveled themselves to know that this is not true you know that some people they never ever leave their country so we can't expect them to know that you know we are not like this because whatever they know about me is through media but it's a general generalization yes exactly uh, generalize people mm -hmm. uh, but it's is it a common thing I don't think so I don't think so and when we uh, deal with a person mm -hmm. yeah just know your uh, values your um, attitude towards different things your um, your background and uh, your intentions and etc etc so um, maybe it's a bit uh, it's not a, a okay it's your experience that's yeah. that's okay and uh, It is sad, to be honest, for example, yes. in the but case you, of this girl, she didn't look, even meet you me. You look European. You look as a European. Uh, a I, European. No, I think like everybody, they ask me if I'm Indian. Like usually people think I'm Indian, but I think even from very far away, they can they can usually tell that I'm and South maybe, Asian. Uh, Caucasian. Uh, yes, maybe like Azerbaijani or Turkish, yes. slightly could be, but... Yeah. But usually they. But uh, uh, but uh, uh, Euro European uh, features of uh, face. Uh, I don't know. Like it, you're actually the first person to say that because yeah. all the time people mostly think that I'm from India. Uh, yeah. uh, thin, thick nose, thick lips. Yeah. <laughs> this one. But. Yeah, as I said, they usually think no, that I'm Indian, uh, so... Yeah. No, there's no big difference. No. And... Um, so... Mm, the racism. Racism. What else? What else? Uh, if we are talking about mm, negative... Mm -hmm. uh, negative things. I can give you a very funny instance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I... I applied for a visa to Georgia. I wanted. I was still in Turkey, and during the summers, I wanted to do a tour from Georgia and then Azerbaijan, and then come back to Turkey because they have the border with Turkey. And they rejected my visa, and the reason was I could be a threat to the national security of their. Well, really? Yeah, I, I still like. I didn't even was sad because when I read it, I just laughed because I was like 21, 22 years old at that time. And I was like, oh my god, like their security is threatened by me. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe they had bad experiences with Pakistanis in, in Georgia before, I don't know. But, I mean, I, I had this travel history and I never, I never overstayed in any country. I have no criminal record or anything. Like, as I told you, I've already been to Norway, like Norway, and like to Poland and like all these countries. And I have like a very clear record. So I think it is, it is either prejudice or it is either racism that they rejected my visa because there was no un other reason. I had an insurance and like everything. I was still in Turkey. I was student there. So, and I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, I was surprised too. Also, uh, before that, I think Italy rejected my visa. It was back in 2017. And, but th the reason they gave was that uh, they were afraid that I will not return back to Turkey. Even though it's weird because I was like in, in my first year of university and I was actually going uh, to Italy to be a volunteer in a small village. Like I was going to help them. <laughs> but they rejected my visa and that time it was my first time I got a, my visa rejected. And I was very upset. I remember I, I used to be more active on social media at that time and I made like a long post that how it is so unfair I was like always a good person and 
because you know as someone who always wanted to travel the world it's just like a an addition